Uh, my topic is flat trusses. History of truss. Early truss was made out of wood and first used by the ancient Greeks and the Romans. Trusses have been used for many centuries. During Renaissance, Andrew Palladio illustrated truss bridges in his four books of architecture as early as 1570. The influence of the 19th century iron truss work in, in Henry Bible Technician Reading Room in Paris can be seen in the Welton ceiling above the main concourse in Maine and the White Pennsylvania Station in New York City. One tradition of long pantry height arch trusses optimized in such 19th century masterpieces as Contamin and Dutter's Gallery that's mentioned in Paris. Continuous in 20th century structures like Peter's Barrens AEG Turbine Factory in Berlin and Tony Garnier's Municipal Slaughterhouse in Lyons, France. Trusses were used deliberately as expressive elements. Within later 20th century architecture, it's more often by appropriating and reinterpreting the industrial applications. Architects and the engineers are always seeking new ways of solving the problem of space enclosure. With the industrialization and development of the modern world, there is demand for efficient and adaptable long span terraces. Because of their light, weight, and high strength, they are among the most common used to span long length. Trusses provide complete flexibility in exterior cladding. And materials could be wood truss pan, still commonly used, and the precast trusses pan. Truss can be to the planner or to the prismatic. What distinguishes the truss from other structural forms is precast is triangulation. The definition a structure is a relatively permanent enclosure construction over a plot of land having a roof and usually windows and often more than one level used for any of a wide variety of activities as living or manufacturing. A structure can also be defined as anything built or constructed. The structure system is that which transfers load through interconnected structure components or members. The role of any structure system is to transmit the applied loads to the foundation. Two many kinds of structure, the multi-story structures and the large span structures, they span larger than 20 meters. For the classification of the structure systems, uh, we can divide them into three parts, vector-active structures, surface-active structures, and the form-active structures. For the vector-active structures, we can divide them into three parts, flat truss, curved truss, and the space truss. As I said, my topic is the flat trusses. Uh, yes, so what is the vector-active truss? vector active structures are systems of short solid straight linear members in which the redirection of forces is affected by multidirectional splitting of single force simply to tension or compression elements and uh, by the way when you click on some photos you can access websites uh, from here as you can see uh, for the flat trusses, what is flat trusses? In architecture, a truss is structure comprising one or more triangle units constructed with straight members whose ends are connected at the joints referred to as nodes. External forces and directions to those forces are considered to act only at the nodes and the result in forces in the members which are either tangential or compressive forces. Moments are ex explicitly excluded because and only because all the joints in a truss are treated as revolutes. 
A planar truss is one where all the members and nodes lie within a two-dimensional plane, while a space truss has the members and nodes extending into three dimensions. The top beams in a truss are called uh, top cards and are generally in a compression. The bottom beams are called bottom cards and are generally in tension. The interior beams are called webs and the areas inside the webs are called the panels. As you can see here, flat dresses and the transmitted flat dresses. For the flat truss systems, um, we can divide them into, as you can see, four parts. Top chord systems, but chord systems, two chord systems, and the camber systems. Symmetrical piece let the steel roof on columns. Symmetrical piece let the steel can deliver roofs on steel columns. And the final, let's get a flat roof with secondary steel beam on steel the columns. For the transmitted flat truss systems, uh, we can divide them into uh, three parts. And the linear system, folded system and intersecting systems. Uh, flat trusses, all members and nodes lie within a two-dimensional plane, consist of straight members connected at joints. No member is continuous through a joint. Each truss carries those loads which act in its plane and may be treated as to the structure. When forces tend to pull a member apart, it is in tension. When the forces tend to compress the member, it is in compression. Uh, members of a truss are slender and not capable of supporting large lateral loads. The main uses are uh, the first one in building to support roofs and the floors to span large distances and carry relatively light loads. In building to support roofs and floors to span large distances and carry relatively light loads. Uh, the, and the second one, in road and rail bridges, for short and intermediate span, and in foot bridges. And uh, the design possibilities through differentiation of roof plans in continuous trusses. Inclined roof plans with both ends supported. Uh, turning horizontal roof plans with both ends supported. And the third one, Alternating horizontal roofs plans central supported. And the last one, roof plans with differing inclination centrally supported. And the wire truss used in Paris Pompidori building. The entire architectural concept relies on exposed truss work. Long span interior floor trusses define column free exhibition zones and exterior wind. Pressing trusses create the graded diagonal pattern of the facades. The main uses are uh, the last one uh, as bracing in buildings and bridges to provide stability where the bracing members from a truss with other structural members, such as the columns in a building. Example about the pressing buildings, John Hancock Tower, vertical wind pressing trusses typically hidden within the framework of tall buildings are given similar architectural expression on the exterior uh, Skidmore, Owings and Mariel's Hancock Buildings, Chicago. And uh, thank you for uh, listening to me. Uh, that's all.